Ahead of my full WRC9 review, I thought I'd share my first impressions, having been given access to a preview version. WRC9 is the latest official rally game that does its best to emulate the World Rally Championship, where superhuman drivers make blitzing through dangerous countryside look enviably easy. Now this is not a full WRC9 review, in fact I was accidentally given the full version of the game and then the developer quickly realised, so now I have a stripped down version with just quick play. Even so, I can give you a good idea of how the game looks and handles. I made a separate video about all the new stuff in WRC9, so feel free to check that out after this one. Anyway, WRC9 uses WRC8 as a basis and is an annual update. What I will say is that supposedly the physics have been improved, although the developer was unwilling to list the exact changes. Kiloton has also beefed up an already beefy career mode with more research options and event types to choose from. New content wise, Rally Japan debuts because it has returned to WRC after a 9 year absence in real life. The other new rallies are Rally New Zealand, which is a gravel fan's dream, and Rally Kenya, which mixes high speed open areas, helicopter pursuits, loose surfaces and exotic wildlife. WRC9, available on all current and next-gen consoles and PC, is said to be visually improved too. This video is at 2K resolution at 60 frames per second, mainly because 4K 60 frames per second is a bit of a stretch for my NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. At 30 is possible with a few settings downgrades. I'd say WRC9 is a pretty game. The new Rally Japan, for instance, is a visual feast of dense vegetation and winding roads. Rally New Zealand in the rain, meanwhile, looks suitably unforgiving and drab, with the trees realistically blowing in the wind and your visibility impaired. Enough detail exists that you feel like you're actually zipping along usually public roads in Japan. Kenya actually feels like a vast expanse of harsh terrain, as it should, and that's impressive given the boundaries are actually quite restrictive. The existing rallies, meanwhile, have also been done the justice they deserve, and that includes Finland and Portugal, which will get updated versions, but not at the expense of the older ones. I will say that water reflections are a little overdone, such as the roads during a storm that look shiny and the reflection of the beautiful setting sun in Kenya, but these add to the drama rather than diminish the immersion. Just try not to stare for too long or you'll end up hitting a tree. Also, rain looks great on the windscreen, but it looks more like little meteorites in replays, particularly if you use the cool slow motion function as part of the improved replay system. Puddles also look a bit odd, and the splash effect when you go through them could be more realistic. Then there are the spectators, which do the job, but that's about it, and the trees, which flex unrealistically when it's windy, and some types are of lower detail than other background scenery in the game, without igniting the WRC vs Dirt Rally debate, which is as tiresome as the console war one. WRC9 continues to do the whole tarmac thing better. Cars understeer if you're blunt with the accelerator, and initiating a slide takes more effort than on less grippy surfaces. All the various WRC cars accelerate like a cat on a hot tin roof, which makes sense when they weigh 1,200 kilograms and have 380 horsepower pumped to four corners of high performance rubber. Each car has its own characteristic too, but in the WRC class it's subtle enough, as you would expect from harshly enforced restrictions. Older cars such as the Lancia Stratos really do show their age, while the big old 911 comes across as heavier and less agile, just like in real life obviously. When using a controller, WRC9 is bags of fun, although the default sensitivity level is a bit snappy, which leads to snaking around as you overcorrect oversteer. Once adjusted as low as it can go, which is minus 10, the issue is reduced, and I felt a lot more in control, but I wish you could reduce the sensitivity more, as there is still a bit of a problem in the third person views. Use a steering wheel though, like the Thrustmaster TSXW and Logitech G920 I've been using, and you're in for one hell of a workout, such as the need to steer constantly. It's rewarding, but also much harder to master than when using a controller. 
In terms of force feedback, the preview version offers enough detail for helping judge corner entry speed. Surface textures actually feel different and suitably realistic more often than not. In fact, it seems as if the difference has been toned down a little bit than in WRC 8. Not only that, the puddles of death that used to throw you off course are less of an issue. Yeah, they knock your speed, which is realistic, but I found there seems to be no violent direction change. Compared with Dirt Rally 2.0 at launch, WRC 9 feels more intuitive and accurate. Where Dirt Rally 2.0 can be unrealistically unforgiving compared to a real car, particularly where oversteer is concerned, in WRC 9 there are barely any moments when the car does something unexpected. You just feel much more connected. Some will argue there's an arcadey edge to WRC 9, which is true of all racing simulators. But go watch the onboard footage of a real WRC rally car and see how maddeningly fast they are. A combination of high horsepower, insane driver skill and a high visual flow field is why rally should feel bloody fast and WRC 9 nails that. What I love about WRC 9 and WRC 8 to a lesser extent is that you can get into a zen-like flow where all the inputs come naturally and you flow between corners with the grace of a ballerina. It's mesmerizing to watch and it's even more mesmerizing when you do it yourself. It's not all perfect though. I did find one challenge where you have to drive a very broken Lancia Stratos in the wet a bit odd. It wasn't clear what was wrong with the car and yet it felt like both wheels wanted to go in different directions. Maybe this is just a preview version issue. Also, some of the physics can be a bit too forgiving, such as cars driving up steep banks after going off piste. And the collision physics, though mainly consistent, has the odd moment of being strange. On the flip side, cars do love to crash and flip over as they would in real life if you push your luck too hard. I have to say, Rally Japan is a highlight. Not only is it tiring trying to avoid nudging barriers and handbraking around the many hairpins, there's a satisfying contrast of speed and technical sections. It's also a race where you have to avoid scrubbing off speed unnecessarily on the fast uphill sections, which rewards the more precise drivers. Rally New Zealand, meanwhile, is arguably the one where you are most likely to throw your car over the edge or misjudge entry speed. In fact, avoiding damage becomes more pressing than speed when you start out. This really is a tough race. Rally Kenya, meanwhile, might actually be my favorite because it's just all out speed combined with wonderfully satisfying sections where you navigate rocks, trees, and other things trying to kill you. Plus there are these open areas that just add a little variety to the game. Although, as I said earlier, you can't really stray too far off and shortcuts are usually penalized quite heavily. I know I'm not alone in saying WRC 8 had the best rally stage design and WRC 9 takes it even further. Not just because there's more of them, but because they offer a good balance between accessibility and mastery. Also, they're just entertaining to drive and that's what I want from a game. Helping the cause is the fact you can adjust your field of view settings for all camera views. In fact, it can be overwhelming knowing what will help and what doesn't. So you may want to leave it standard at first, but those who know what they favor can tuck right in as you could in WRC 8, even on console. Meanwhile, when it comes to difficulty, you definitely need to drive hard and consistently on most stages to come top, which makes sense. The barrier for entry is low on most, but not all stages. However, to set records and win all the time will take a decent level of practice and maybe even tailoring car setups to each stage and country. As for sound, WRC8 was surprisingly accurate for engine notes if you actually watched real footage. WRC9 continues to do most cars justice, while the sound effects going on around you are top notch. I love the fact that stones knock into the bottom of the car, for instance, as they would in real life. It just adds to the realism. Into right four, tightens over crest. As for bad things, I did experience random crashes on multiple occasions and my PC is no slouch, so it seems more like a stability issue. And my lovely metal-based Thrustmaster handbrake works as a sequential shifter, which is great, but not as a handbrake, which is what I actually wanted. It just wouldn't let me assign the action to a button for some reason. I have asked the developer about this. I would also say that WRC9 is not a radical departure 
from its predecessor, and knowing that WRC8 is on Xbox Game Pass, in fact it was free this month for Gold users, it might be worth giving that a go first. The latest game is definitely about adding content and iron increases of its predecessor, but then there are multiple new game modes, the improved replay system, and a whole lot else, so if you like WRC8, chances are you're going to enjoy the latest version. And if you're completely new to rally games in general, I'd say WRC9 is the one to go for if you just want rally thrills. No rally game does everything right, but Killerton has ensured more boxes are ticked than not. Well, except virtual reality. And that's it for my first impressions video. Hopefully you found it useful. Feel free to ask about the game in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and if feeling particularly generous, buy some official merchandise. Take care, bye. Into left four short, don't cut. On right three cut. Through left five break, into right two cut, 30. Left six, very long, into...